Hey, what's up guys? So recently, my good buddy Dennis Dunbar, amazing retoucher out of Los Angeles, posted a video showing how to use the inverse, the complementary inverse hue of the shadows of a portrait to create like a nice depth enhancing highlight. And it also helps like an image like this of Brenna become a little less monochromatic, right? So this is all very, very warm, 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 warm. Even though we had some, some color toning that I was doing on set with gels, um, it's still a little bit warm. So if I want to add some depth and dimension, a highlight wash of color that will kind of, in this case, cool off the highlights would be in order. And Dennis's video, which we are linking to somewhere here, if it's not popping up in the video, check the description so you can watch Dennis's video. He's going to walk you through it manually. It's pretty straightforward. But when I saw the method, I thought, oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. I, I do similar all the time. It hit me. I can create an instant action uh, to do exactly what he's doing. Now, here's why I recommend you download the action. You could be able to use it in your production workflow. Absolutely. But it's a great way to learn and see what the results get you. All right. So let me run it and then we'll explain what's happening. OK, so it's called 180 degree shadow to high complementary color. OK, so we run that. Immediately, we're hit with a color picker. This is where you're supposed to select your shadow color, wherever that shadow color may be. And like Dennis says in his video, the uh, brightness isn't really important. The saturation and the hue is what's important. So you notice when I click it immediately, we start seeing a blue tone in our highlight. Let's hit OK. So let's explain the action real quick. This is the color picker. OK, this is our shadow color we just selected, and it's already labeled as such, set to color blend mode. OK, then we have it on blend if, just like Dennis's video. This is a good default. Um, um, you can expand this range if you want, okay? But it's just set to a decent, you know, good starting point that you can play with because every shot's going to be different. Currently, that entire layer is at 50% opacity, but crucially, we have an invert that's clipped down. You see the little arrow clipped down, giving you the complementary color to your shadow immediately because obviously it's a 180 degree hue shift. That's what an invert is. So you can double click your color picker at any moment and select what your shadow may be. This is all going to be pretty much the same result on this shot because everything is the same hue, really. OK, but you can also manually change the saturation to get a slightly different result when it inverts. Now, of course, you know, this is why I say it might be more of a learning thing, because if you want more or less saturation um, on your color and you want to see you want to pick the exact hue manually, you don't necessarily want exactly 180 degree hue. It, it, it will limit you, right? You want to be able to pick the exact highlight color you want. Well, then we need to just, you know, turn off the invert and then come here and pick the exact highlight color that we want. But it's still a great demo to give you an idea what happens if you pick that shadow. And we can put this on 100%, just like in Dennis's demo, it's a little harder to see. So there's 100% opacity. And I can click different areas of shadow to see how that affects my complementary highlight. Okay. And of course, at any given moment, you can always change the Blend if something a little less or a little more. That's super strong. So how about 30%? There we go. Off, on, off, on. Super simple technique, brilliant technique. Um, but just like Dennis also mentions in his video, less is more. This is not a situation where this is your solution. I mean, maybe it is. Everybody has different visions, but usually less is more. Takes a shot that, in my opinion, I like this shot, but it is a little mon monochromatic and I felt like everything got washed in warmth. So this helps neutralize some of those highlights, if nothing else, uh, without screaming complementary color, it helps neutralize. If I expand it a little bit, then we start seeing a complementary color. But no matter, um, I want to just create a quick action. You can download it in the description below. It'll set up this little layer stack. And like I said, you can play around with it. You can see how it works. Just use the color picker to select the shadow color and everything else is done for you. And then you can tweak and, you know, that's not exactly a shadow color, is it, Nino? Come on now. There we go. And then you can tweak and adjust um, anything you want with opacity and, and whatever. And don't forget, blend if as well. It's a great learning tool to see how the process works, to see what Dennis is talking about. And like I said, it may well be something good for you in terms of production. But if nothing else, it's a great visualizer.